now we'll continue with the middle part of the norma basalis the sulcus tube it is a groove between the posterior medial margin of greater wing of sphenoid and the petrous part of the temporal bone cartilaginous part of eustachian tube also called as the auditory tube occupies this sulcus inferior surface of the petrous part of temporal bone it is located just behind the greater wing of the sphenoid its anterior medial serrated end marks the apex of the petrous part the carotid area lies near the apex the lower opening of the carotid canal is located just behind the quadrilateral area it transmits internal carotid artery with its sympathetic and venous plexus carotid canal runs forwards and medially in the petrous part and perforates its apex as upper opening of the carotid canal foramen lacerum it is located between the sphenoid and apex of petrous temporal bone it is named lacerum because of irregular margin carotid canal and the pterygoid canal open into it the structures passing through it and traversing the foramen is discussed earlier foramen lacerum in its lower part is closed by the cartilage tympanic part of the temporal bone it is a triangular bone which occupies the angle between the petrous and the squamous part its anterior surface is related to the parotid gland squamous part of the temporal bone only a small part of the squamous part of temporal bone is seen in the norma basalis the anterior or the articular part of the mandibular fossa articular tubercle and part of the roof of the infratemporal fossa squamotymphanic fissure it marks the junction of squamous and tympanic part of temporal bones downward edge of the tympanic tegment tympani divides the squamotymphanic fissure into petrotympanic that is the posterior and petrosquamous in the anterior fissures cauda tympani nerve anterior tympanic artery and anterior ligament of malleus pass through the petrotympanic fissure now the posterior part of the norma basalis in the median area we have the foramen magnum it is the largest foramen in the skull it is single foramen located in the lowest part of the posterior cranial fossa and it is oval in shape it is the communication between the cranial cavity and the vertebral canal anterior atlanto occipital membrane is attached to its anterior margin posterior atlanto occipital membrane is attached to its posterior margin lateral margins provide attachment to the alar ligaments the structures passing through the foramen is discussed earlier external occipital crest it extends from the posterior margin of foramen magnum to external occipital protuberance upper margin of ligamentum nuchae is attached to it external occipital protuberance trapezius is attached to it superiorly and ligamentum nuchae inferiorly now in the lateral area the occipital condyles these are located lateral to the anterior half of the foramen magnum each oval and convex to articulate with concave superior articular process of atlas that is the cervical vertebra condylar fossa it is present just behind the occipital condyle it may have condylar canal for emissary vein from the sigmoid sinus hypoglossal canal lateral to the anterior part of the condyle is the outer opening of the hypoglossal canal the structures passing through this hypoglossal canal is discussed earlier the squamous part of the occipital bone superior nuchal line is a well defined ridge which extends laterally from external occipital protuberance on each side its medial one third provides origin to the trapezius while lateral one third rece- receives insertion of sternomastoid and splenius capitus running laterally on each side from the middle of external occipital crest is another ridge called the inferior nuchal line 
A vertical line on each side along with the inferior nuchal line divides the region below the superior nuchal line into four areas. Each meant for the attachment of muscle as follows: the upper medial area for the semisplenis capitis, upper lateral area for the obliquus superior, lower medial area for the rectus capitis posterior minor, and lower lateral area for the rectus capitis posterior major. Now jugular foramen. It lies lateral to the hypoglossal canal. The structures passing through this foramen we have discussed it earlier. At its posterior end of the anterior wall, it is hollowed out to form a jugular fossa, which lodges the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. Tympanic canaliculus is present in the ridge between jugular fossa and the lower opening of the carotid canal. It transmits the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve to the middle ear. Styloid process. It is a conical projection just below the tympanic part of the temporal bone. It is directed downwards, forwards, and slightly medially. Its attachments we have discussed it earlier. That is three muscles and two ligaments. Now the mastoid process. It is prominent projection from the temporal bone posterior lateral to the styloid process. The medial aspect of this process shows a deep groove. That is the digastric notch, which provides attachment to the posterior belly of digastric. Medial to the digastric notch, there can be another groove for the occipital artery. Stylo mastoid foramen. It is present between the styloid and mastoid processes. Facial nerve and the stylo mastoid artery pass through this foramen. Lateral to this stylo mastoid foramen is the jugular process of the occipital bone.